This video begins the Network Attacks section. We're on the first lesson, ARP Poisoning. Here are the topics. We'll prepare a second Kali Linux virtual machine and explain how normal ARP requests and replies work, and then perform ARP poisoning, which is a man-in-the-middle attack, to redirect traffic on a local area network. You prepare a second Kali Linux machine the same way you made the first one. If you need to, you can re-download the original image. Then you just unzip it into a new folder and run it. You can run two virtual machines at the same time, as long as your machine has enough memory. I recommend using NAT networking mode on both machines because then the machines can talk to each other, but they're isolated from the local area network by a virtual router, which will help prevent uh, attacking innocent machines on your network with these attacks. So you have two machines on the screen, uh, one attacker and one target, and before you do anything else, um, check to make sure they can see each other with pings. So here is my target machine. If I do ifconfig, I see that mine has an address starting with 172. And if I go here and do ifconfig on the attacker machine, it also has an address starting with 172. And if I ping one machine from the other, the 187 is the attacker. You see I get replies. So that's what I need, showing these two machines are networked together. Now address resolution protocol is used to convert a IP address into a MAC address so traffic can be sent, and it works by having ARP requests that ask who has a certain IP address, and the reply says that IP address is associated with a certain MAC address. Like many networking protocols, this was designed decades ago when nobody thought about security very much, so there's no password, no signature, no way to be sure that you're actually being told the truth. All the network devices just believe any response they get. So that means an evil attacker can just send unsolicited messages saying, I'm the gateway address, and the target will then say, believe it, and send traffic to the attacker. The attacker can then turn on forwarding and forward those packets to their destination so that the target does not know this has happened, and then the attacker is in the middle, able to see and alter traffic between the target and the server. So to turn on IP forwarding, you just execute this command to set an environment variable, or anyway, a system variable, that makes uh, the machine act like a router. Then you need to know your attacker's Ethernet address and your target's IP address, called INET. Then if on your target machine, if you do a trace route to a server like google.com, you'll see that the gateway is the first hop. That's normal networking. We're going to insert another machine in the middle. You can do it with ARP. Scapy is of course ready for this. Like any other network packet, you just create an ARP object, which has various parameters, including hardware source, P source, and so on and then you set them carefully to the right values. The destination is the target's IP address. Hardware source is the attacker's MAC address, called Ether. Uh, the P source is the gateway IP, and the destination might as well be broadcast. Doesn't matter. Um, a simple answer, and this is the layer two broadcast, all Fs. So on the target, you could just wait in a real attack for the target to Stop using the network for a few minutes and clear its cache, but in our demonstration, we'll manually remove the entry for the gateway from the cache. Then from the attacker, you send a series of malicious ARPs, one every second, and that will cause the trace route to change. So now there is another machine between you and the gateway, which is a way to see that the man in the middle attack is working. So let's try that. All right. We have the values we need here. Here is the attacker's Ethernet address, and here is the uh, target's IP address. Those are the things we're going to need. Now to turn on IP forwarding, I've got that up here. There it is. That's going to make this machine forward packets like a router. And now let's move over to Scapy, which is here. All right. I create an ARP object. I think I can make this a little bigger. All right, I create an ARP object, and now I set the parameters. I set the destination here, and the hardware source, 
and the P source, and then the broadcast address. And now I'm ready to send my attack. But this one here, this will send the attack. I'm sending one packet per second. Now to show that it's working, first I'll do a trace route to google.com over here. And you see that the very first top is the gateway. All right. The future hops, by the way, won't work in NAT networking mode, but the first one is the only one I care about. Now I send my attack. It's sending a packet every second. Over here I clear the case, the cache, with ARP. I delete the old entry. Now the poison will put in a new entry. Now I can do trace route. And you see, I now have another machine between me and the gateway. It's this attacker. The attacker is now in the middle.